Well, hi there. Welcome to the Healthy Church Staff Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about workplace trends. Now, these aren't just about workplace trends in churches, but just in businesses overall. And we're going to look at six different trends and see how they might apply to our church, particularly as we look at this next year, 2025. These are six workplace trends to watch in 2024, but we're just uh, here at the podcast. We're just like most churches. We're a few months behind anyway. I'm just kidding. Gallup recently released their six workplace trends to watch, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, I'm Todd Rhodes. I am your host for the Healthy Church Staff podcast that you are listening to right now. I'm also one of the co-founders over at chemistrystaffing.com. So let's dive right in. Here's trend number one, the rise of hybrid work. More and more employees are demanding flexibility in where and when they work. And this means that churches, this is going going to affect us. And we should be maybe at least a little open to some remote work options or some flexible schedules and some creative solutions that help meet the needs of our staff. We're seeing this in our candidate work here at chemistrystaffing.com, particularly with younger candidates, as you might guess, that are looking for that added flexibility, maybe working from home on Friday or not being in the office on Monday or something like that. You might be diametrically opposed to this, but I'm telling you it's a thing and it's not going to go away. And particularly younger people want a little bit more flexibility. And my feeling is eventually churches are going to give in at least uh, a lot of churches are going to give in at least in some sensible ways to look for some ways to maybe increase some flexibility in the workplace. Okay, so that's trend number one, the rise of hybrid work. Trend number two, the importance of employee well-being. Okay, burnout is a real issue, and it is in the secular marketplace, and it is in the church, and employees are prioritizing their mental and emotional health. And we've talked about that on this podcast quite often in this past year. We need to create this kind of culture of support and encourage work-life balance, particularly in ministry, and provide resources to help our staff thrive. Again, as churches hire younger candidates for their roles, mental health is, and emotional health and work-life balance is huge. Being on call 24-7 with no breaks and getting burned out is not an option for younger candidates, they will move to a place that is more user-friendly to them in that area. So that's trend number two, the importance of employee well-being. Trend number three, the focus on diversity and equality and inclusion, DEI, is what you hear. And yes, this does affect the church. And again, yes, it does affect younger staff members more than older staff members. And, And here's I know DEI, many of us don't have a a really great outlook on DEI overall, but here's what it means for employees, okay? To throw out everything you know about DEI or everything you think about it. When it comes down to employees, and we see this in the church as well, employees just want to feel valued and respected for who they are. And the more that we can do that, where everybody feels welcome and that everybody has a voice, that's really what I'm talking about with uh, diversity and equity and inclusion. You, If you're not feeling the pressure in your church to be more diverse and inclusive, you will very shortly. It, that is a trend that's happening in the secular world, and it's also starting to happen in our churches. And there are ways that, that biblically we need to be diverse and inclusive, right? There are ways that we should not theologically, but this is a trend. It's the trend that, that Gallup mentions, and I mention it here as well, for your consumption, okay? <laughs> Here's trend number four, the demand for continuous learning and development. We've always had conferences and and training sessions and all of that, but employees really do want opportunities to grow and develop their skills, and we need to invest in training and mentorship and leadership development programs. And I've mentioned this before on the podcast, I think one of the things we're seeing, particularly from younger candidates and younger church staff members, is they want the opportunity to learn and to grow and to develop and to change positions even in your church. Maybe they get hired as a youth pastor, but in a couple of years, they want to see what else there is to do. They want to maybe move up or move to a different area, maybe discipleship or a campus pastor or something, but they would love to do it. Many of them would love to do it. If they love your church, they'd love to be able to do it where they are. 
But so many of our churches are just, we have this slot for you, and this is the only slot you'll ever have here. That's a real detriment for some of the younger candidates and younger people that we see, church staff people, that really want to continuously learn and develop and maybe even switch and move roles or departments inside your church if your church is large enough to do that. That's trend number four. Trend number five, the need for strong communication and collaboration, particularly because we mentioned the hybrid work uh, factors in there, but clear communication, effective collaboration, it's more important now than ever. We need to be able to utilize technology and create systems that foster connection and teamwork. And it's one of the things we've seen in the past five years since COVID is that a strong need for every staff member to be able to lean into technology and to lean into systems and to foster connection and collaboration, not only across teams at your church and on your church staff, but also with volunteers and people in your church as well. So it's uh, there's a real need for strong communication and collaboration. They have to not only have the spiritual heart and the pastoral spirit, but they also be able need to be able to communicate strongly and collaborate well together with other people. And then finally, the emphasis on purpose and meaning. And this is happening in the secular workplace, but man, it, it should have always been a part of our DNA, but it is increasingly important. Our staff members want to feel like their work matters. They need to feel valued. We need to connect our staff to the mission and vision of our church and help them see how their contributions are making a difference. Because honestly, one of the reasons that we see people wanting to move to a different ministry position is because they don't feel like their work matters and they don't feel valued. So here's the bottom line for today. These workplace trends are shaping kind of the future of work. Maybe you've seen some of them already at play in your church. Maybe you're like, Todd, no, we haven't seen that yet. If you haven't seen it yet, I would dare to say you're going to see it happen in the next couple of years. Sometimes churches are a little bit slower. But bottom line is we need to be increasingly flexible. We need to prioritize well-being of our staff, which we always should be doing. We need to invest in development, which we always should be doing, and promoting collaboration, which we always should be doing. None of this really is is rocket surgery. We should be doing all this anyway. But we should be connecting our staff to the purpose of our church. And if we do, we can actually cultivate a staff really is healthy and working in a thriving work environment. And we can keep staff longer at our churches. Hope this is helpful to you. Reach out to me anytime, podcast at chemistrystaffing.com. Appreciate you joining us. Hope you have a great weekend.